Last week it was really the week, wasn't it? Yeah, so now it's strong. Exactly. So welcome, welcome to Lunch and Armor Marketing. How's everybody doing today? Doing all right? Good, good. It's nice to have a full house on such a beautiful fall day. Um, and we always start at noon, so it's noon now. And uh, any first timers? Any first timers here at LHM? Can I see your hands? Okay. Welcome, welcome. Dave Linnerberry fans? Two Dave Linnerberry fans? Great, great. Wonderful. So uh, we're here every Wednesday. This is Lunch and Armor Marketing. My name is Did I say Lunch and Armor Marketing? See, this, I need like a shocker. Like when I say that, I need to shock me. Like my dog. So we branded, we rebranded. We're uh, LA2M. You say, what's LA2M? Well, it used to be Lunch and Armor Marketing. But we are a, uh, we're a 501c3 marketing education group, and we rebranded to LA2M because it gives us more possibilities. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, LA2M, follow us on Facebook. We have a really big LinkedIn group that I encourage you to join. And uh, if you want to live tweet from this event, please use the hashtag LA2M. Uh, Aaron O'Neill, need some feedback there. Aaron O'Neill is going to be tweeting from the LA2M account, so uh, you can follow LA2M on Twitter. So uh, I'm up here with Stacy Collick from Dollarville Printing. Stacy is our treasurer. Uh, we are a volunteer organization, and so Stacy volunteers. So every week we pass the hat. That's one thing about LA2M is it's old school, so there's no dues, there's no membership fees. Uh, if you want lunch, it's $10, and you can see the menus on the table. That goes to Connor O'Neill's. If you want to give a couple bucks to us, we pass the hat. So that goes to fund the organization. Um, last year we donated to Amber Public Schools to help their marketing and advertising students who didn't have money to go to programs and stuff. And um, so that's what this money goes for, plus hard costs. So what we have t-shirts. Um, did you see these coming in? How many people have bought a t-shirt? Yeah. Dennis, thank you. Stacey, anybody else bought a t-shirt? I bought one. Bud, you bought one? Yeah, it's the very first thing. Thank you, thank you, Bud. Bud likes to donate to our organization. Thanks, Bud, we appreciate that. Everybody should buy one of these. They're, they're 12 dollars which is pretty much cost. Um, and they're really cool. So this is the one we get to the speaker. So, Dave, this is for you. I know you need a t-shirt. It's a good one. Um, so buy a t-shirt, because they help promote the organization and wear them to other cool events. Um, speaking of other cool events, tomorrow is the Informed Facebook event. Is anyone going down to that, the Informed Michigan Facebook event? I know a few people are, okay. I encourage you to go, there's still tickets available. Uh, VP of Marketing for Facebook is going to be there. Um, and also there is, uh, well, TEDx Detroit. Is anybody going to TEDx Detroit next Friday? David is? Nobody else. Yeah, so it's a much smaller uh, guest list this year. In the past, there's been 1,000 plus. This year it's like 100 people, so that's probably why you're not going. Don't feel bad. Um, we'll be there. So, all right, so enough about that. So I'm gonna introduce the speaker. He's gonna talk for 30 minutes or so. Oh, the, oh, the sponsor, God, how could I forget the sponsor? Why doesn't somebody remind me that there's no D. Davey? So we have a sponsor. Bud, you wanna tell about your workshop? Sure thing. Um, I'm Bud Gibson. I started the search marketing program at Eastern Michigan University. We're putting on our second annual search marketing workshop, wondering, you know, how does mobile impact uh, my business? Um, so people will suddenly find that 10, 20, 50 percent of the visits are coming from mobile devices. We're going to track focused on that. Well, gee, how do I even get in to online marketing? We've got an effective search marketing which covers those issues. We have great keynotes, kind of giving you an idea of what companies like Google and Pure Michigan are doing, uh, along with real sort of down-to-earth stories in our workshop sessions. All for the low, low price of $40. And that gets you breakfast and lunch, November 16th. We are close to selling out. Um, we had a big surge in sales at the end of last week, beginning of this week. Uh, so we have somewhere on the order of 20 seats left. Get them while they're hot. Great. Thank you, Bud. And Bud is a sponsor. You two can sponsor LA2M. It's $250 a month um, to sponsor. You get to you mention in the newsletter, which goes out to over 1,700 people. It's a really good way to promote your business. Uh, Mary Lou, are we both for sponsors through the year, through the rest of the year? Through the rest of the year, we have opening starting in January. Okay, so we have sponsorship opening starting in January. So if you're kind of a small to medium-sized business, want to get the word out to 1,700 people interested in marketing, it's a good group. Um, all right, so without further ado, uh, Dave Lindenberry is our speaker. 
Dave has spoken here before. He's, he's a wonderful speaker. He, he is formerly from Campbell Ewell. And uh, yeah, I can't believe they let him go because he's extremely smart and valuable. And he ran all their social media. You know, we saw in the past some of the examples of what Campbell Ewell did for the Navy. Um, Dave has talked about trends in social. And today he's going to be talking about new trends. So he's actually independent now. So Dave Linnebury LLC, the next big company to take over the world is him and whoever works with him. So he's been getting a lot of uh, good people calling him, I'm sure, for work because he's very talented. So Dave Linnebury is now independent, just so you know. He is married, they have a baby on the way. And uh, Dave's just a great, gifted speaker. He's speaking at Brand Camp University coming up. He speaks at events all over the world. And he is kind enough to come to LA to him, which is really, really cool. So uh, let's give him a big round of applause. Welcome to Dave Linnebury. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to talk about um, touch and post touch devices, which um, I brought some unusual ones to show you guys. If they're good, you can come up and play with them. <laughs> um, first, we're, I'm going to break it into both into two parts. So we're going to talk about touch first and post touch because that's kind of a more of an emerging market. Whereas touch devices, you guys already have a few. But I want to ask, who's, anyone know what the very first touch communications device was? Telegram. Hold it. Holder. Drum? Bingo. Drum out out logs. They're pretty much the very first thing we ever did. And um, because they traveled long distances, uh, the sound was good. Uh, and that was, and they're still being used in some places. Uh, but what we're going to talk about are the ones you're used to seeing. So you all have seen smartphones. I hope. You all have seen tablets, right? iPods and other game controllers, um, e-readers, and then touch-based musical instruments, and even things like, uh, as Bob pointed out to me, uh, Nike Fuel Bands are internet-connected touch devices, um, which are kind of more emerging new things. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but it literally is telling me that I have... Yeah. I burned 492 calories today, and I have taken 2,439 steps. <laughs> Supposed to get 14 done. Uh, those are simple devices, um, and the reason it's changing over this post touch thing is mouse and keyboard didn't really work for everybody. If you've got disabilities like tendonitis or shoulder uh, stress, uh, post uh, repetitive stress injuries, a mouse and a keyboard might not be a good combination for you, and it doesn't really meet everything we had to do. It was very difficult for people to draw, so they had to come up with wake-up tablets. Um, gestures are simply faster than mouse and keyboard. It is a lot faster to go like this, to, to uh, make something bigger on your page than it is to go under a menu, find look, find a zoom, hit a uh, percentage, hit OK, go back and wait for it to change. Um, and then as a species, you know, our eyes, we are eye and hand based. I read this article a long time ago by a scientist and he was talking about what happens if humans were not eye based? What if we were olfactory based like dogs? Where our whole world was based on our nose, our science would be so different. It would all be based on like pheromones and um, things that we can't see, but um, but it's not. We are based on our eyes and our hands, so all our devices in, are going to have to continue to be that way. The other reason touch is really popular is because it's opening new ways of expressing itself. Um, these devices are one thing for music and art, but also just in general. Children are learning faster with these devices than um, they would have with regular computers because they're not even though people are like, oh, my two-year-old knows how to use these. Well, they can't type them, and they don't type, but they can figure out all the gesture movements really fast because those are intuitive to humans. The downside of touch, though, this is why post-touch is evolving, is one of them is that the manufacturers, they haven't been real um, imaginative. They've been sticking to whatever Apple did, so pinching, scrolling, swiping, but there's so many more things your hands can do. You can slap, you can rub, you can scratch. And there's also the other side of your hand, and they're not even thinking about that there's different textures to your hand, except for one company. I'll show you. Um, and then the rest of your body. 
I mean, we've been dancing for thousands of years. We, we clearly can do gestures. But even with the gestures, when you do see things that use gesture, like a we or a connect, there's such exaggerated motions. Like, can you imagine going like that and trying to do a spreadsheet? <laughs> That'd be taking you forever. And um, there was a study done on, um, remember Minority Report when Tom Cruise was up there doing this stuff and swiping? Everyone's going, when are we going to get back? Never. Apparently, it hurts your shoulders really fast. And Tom Cruise was in the hospital a couple times during filming with the horrible, what they call a gorilla arm from doing that. It's not going to be a good thing to do. It's not a smart way to do it. So there's companies like Leap Motion, and what they're doing is looking into, even if it's a TV across the room, could I just do a tiny little flick and it recognizes it? And maybe that's a whole page movement? And yes, apparently it's pretty easy to do. Um, this is, I talked about this, Tap, Tap Sense is a company, it's actually a brand new company that's a kid named um, Charles Harrison. I think. He figured out that your nail, your knuckle, the pads of your hand and the tips all have different like acoustic properties when they smack the glass or touch it and that they, it's easy to recognize those. Um, Microsoft's doing similar things. I showed a couple, last time I was here, I showed you guys something with Microsoft where they were doing um, a projected interface on your arm. And that then used tapping on your arm and made different acoustic waves for your arm. Well, they didn't even think about that too. Was your nails gonna make a different sound? Tip your finger versus the pad, and your knuckles all can do it. And you automatically quadruple the number of gestures you have. It's like, I mean, it's gonna get ridiculous if they keep adding these. You're like, well, okay, is that a nine finger swipe or is it a seven finger? <laughs> you know, it's gonna get ridiculous, but if we can do things like this where it's easy for us to just move our hands around real fast, it looks like monkeys are you know, not really doing this. The other thing is, they said that life expectancy for touch devices as a major component is about 10 years. We're about two years into it. And touch, or post-touch, I think is going to be about 25 years. And these are the cool ones. I'm going to show you a lot of um, uh, videos for these because they're just, some of them are just harder to explain or easier just to see them. Um, and post-touch involves things that um, isn't always a device, but it's a way of communicating a different way. And I'll show you what I mean. Does anyone know what the first post-touch communications device was? I'll give you a pin as a musical instrument. What's that? Yes. Good. What? You've never seen these things. They're just, they used to use them in science fiction movies a lot. This guy's playing an Elvis song and they're just bizarre. recognizing his body's um, sensitivity to how far they are. You can get really active. You can play your that on, but there's no markings on this device. Oh, that's really <laughs> um, is it surprising that those things are still being made? Um, Moog synthesizers makes them now, and they are really, really cool. Um, again, a lot of musicians are using them again. Um, but uh, what I'm going to get into is things that are non-standard surfaces for viewing, communicating, or, or just some type of interacting. So one of them is projection mapping, and that is literally applying an image 3D into real space, and it really confuses you. Um, if, if you want to see who's leading the charge of that, it's pretty much all the dubstep musicians, like Skrillex, uh, people like the Chemical Brothers, a lot of these bands are doing some amazing things where, you know, like when I was a kid, if you went to a show, like a laser show, it was a big deal at a rock show, and now it's like, yeah, that's really boring now. Um, you have to do 3D projection mapping. Uh, and if you ever look up the Chemical Brothers or Skrillex on YouTube and look at what they're doing, it's insane. Um, I will show you a couple of really cool examples, though, that by companies, because we're going to be talking about how this applies to you as a company. So, uh, another one is near field depth cameras. These are going to be on every single laptop and iPad within the next year or two. Logitech's making the first ones. And basically, it's a webcam, but it recognizes you, and it recognizes how far you are and what you're doing. So basically, you will be able to interact like this with your laptop and not touch it. Uh, voice recognition's been around for years. It's not that great still. Uh, obviously, we still have problems with when you have a cold, can't get in your machine, that's a problem. Um, uh, certain accents are hard to do or understand. 
Um, augmented reality, I'm going to show you some examples of that. You guys will, hopefully I'll see some of that by now. But we're going to see some really, really cool ones that uh, Toyota and Google are working with. And um, then there's all, um, eye tracking is getting really good. Eye tracking has gotten to the point where we can now use it with your eyes as a mouse and get very, very specific. So that will um, end up, um, and that's one of the things Google's doing. So there's combinations of all these that are occurring. Uh, so these are the ones you've probably seen, the Wii and Microsoft Connect. How many of you have seen Project Glass? A couple, okay, so we're going to see the video because it's really cool what Google's doing with this. And if you haven't seen the video, it's amazing. Um, people are improperly calling it Google Glasses, but it's actually called Project Glass. Uh, Lead Motion is this company I told you about that's doing, uh, recognizing what your laptop's doing. They're doing those near field communications, or near field uh, depth cameras. Um, with Logitech, and they're also doing software to make them happen. And then I brought some um, instruments, but there's, the post ones are getting even weirder. This is Project Glass. Mapping, but this is to show you what you can do with 
this that you actually have some real imagination. So pre, like I said, projection mapping is, is um, images being projected into real space. This was done live. So this is our, I, mean, I hate mimes and I hate break dancing. This guy's both. Somehow he makes it really cool. <laughs> Toilet did it through a story of a kid playing with the window in the car. 
really clever. Okay, it shows you what you can go up to a car really soon. Is there a problem? All this stuff, especially projection mapping, is being led by musicians for once in history. The internet is not being led by pornography um, and, and fashion shows. Um, and uh, Morocco, strangely enough, is a place where the most, most of this is occurring, which is really unusual. They have the biggest um, award show for this kind of art and, this, and people doing this. And if you get a, the award from this show, it's kind of the video equivalent of projection mapping equivalent of the cans. Um, so with that, let's go over some live stuff. If you guys want to come up here, you can play with these things. But let me say that a couple of years ago, I bought this, which was a, actually a synthesizer, a lot smaller than my other synthesizers, which were that big, had keyboards. And then they came out with this one this year, which was a quarter the size and about Ten times more efficient. But these things work for you know, you know, you know, whatever. Um, they're basically like infinitely um, expressive pads that um, let you write music and they keep recording tracks over them.
this was, I was able to rate like um, 24 tracks of sound within like an hour with this, and I, you know, like, these are 99 dollars. So um, it really changed how I was approaching uh, writing music and stuff. That I didn't necessarily always need a keyboard. I didn't necessarily always need drums. I could just do it all on, 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 with my fingertips. Um, and then sometimes the sliding is okay because uh, it's just a uh, uh, way of writing music. I mean, actually, this does play well. The sound if anyone wants to try it. It's just pretty quiet. Anybody have questions for me about these things or where they're going or how you can use them for your um, businesses? Who has questions? <laughs> Who's speechless? <laughs> <laughs> Just you. <laughs> like this where you might almost test an operation yeah. to, to be sure of the territory to work? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and you'd be able to do it big enough that everyone can really, really see. Um, I think you could also do it if you are, if for areas in the body that are too small to see, why not just keep enlarging them so you could see them? Okay. You know? I think, I think you're, you're, you're dead on. I think that's exactly where this needs to happen. So what we, were, what we were watching there uh, was a 
projection using just normal light projection equipment? Yeah, well, it's a little different. It's, it, the, the projection equipment's a little different, but the software is really cheap and the um, flat is free. Yeah. Um, the amazing thing is so a lot of it works in the daytime, and a lot of it has a really long distance um, of projection, which is really cool, because most daytime projectors, you know, you're lucky to get a good one at 30 feet, and these ones are going to six and 700 feet somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so, like this idea of the medical view, you could do this in a small room and project it up on a You could do it in an you know, yeah. auditorium and make something huge. Yeah, absolutely. And people from every angle will be able to see it, which is what's really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there's no reason why people in the audience couldn't just start, you know, spinning what they're looking at or uh, making comments on things live. So what is the light reflection? How soon before they start? It's really cool. It's just hitting the it's hitting uh, the surface. I saw a guy who was teaching um, kids for it. So like and, back to the wall behind. Yeah. Um, what was the question? All you need is a, is a, what's it what's it light reflecting off of? And I saw a guy who teaches a class in this to kids, and what he showed was he uses an overhead projector made of as low tech as you can get, and he puts he projected a picture of a sculpture like a bottom leaf, and then he starts drawing in around angles around it, he, um, outlining it. He goes, "That's all I'm doing. I'm just doing that computer, but I just see what I want to shape. If I want to take that door and make it into something else, I just have to outline that that's what I'm picking out, and then and give it something else to look at." But the solidity of them and the, the uh, illusion is so good. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Uh, how soon before they start getting like projection TVs where you don't need a screen, it's just like 3D in the center of a room? Um, so, Sony says they have them right now. They says they, they figured out how to do 3D without glasses. For people who wear Coke bottles like me, that's a good thing because I will not. At least now. How is the cost coming down? Right now, I saw a short of railroad testing facility, and they're using RFID and lasers to inspect cars to set them off grade. But the question, the problem they had was the expense of it all. So the question is, is this going to be that much cheaper that somebody at a repair facility, say, 100 miles away, could inspect this train and uh, you know, would it be economic? To I, do think it? It, I think it takes, when you look at extreme distance, they're going to use lasers. Okay. But, um, and then bounce them off something in, in the sky, maybe. Um, but RFID has, a little, has um, come a long way. I mean, the, you guys know what the first RFID was? It was Jacques Cousteau tagging sharks back in the 60s, <laughs> following them. And now it's these tiny, tiny, tiny little chips that um, are inside reading cards and stuff. They do all kinds of things. But um, one, of the, one of the best applications businesses are using with RFID is tracking the product from the time it's made to the time it dies and seeing where, what gets done with it, where does it go. Um, but that's, I mean, obviously that's come down to pennies. Uh, but these are, I think part of the reason this stuff's all cheap is because most of the people who are designing the software <laughs> uh, are uh, making it all open source. So it's, the software's all free. Okay, why is it being led by musicians? I think because they were trying to up their game on their, what they could show. And especially when you're looking at like um, um, people like Skrillex, for example, who's a one-man show. He's not moving a lot. He's playing a laptop, basically, with things he's, loops he's assembled. So for someone like him, it's not really exciting to watch a guy standing there with a laptop. So he's got to do other things. So he starts doing projection mapping onto himself and makes himself into a giant Lego robot or an alien or whatever, it makes this, this stage turn into something else. And so while people are watching that, it doesn't matter that he's like this, you know, 23 year old kid standing there, it's all this stuff around him is making it more interesting. So, um, and there was just became a rat race on that between a lot of those bands to keep trying more and more crazy, crazy things. I think um, uh, some of those bands like Adam and Tobin and uh, Chemical Brothers really started it and got it going in a huge, huge way and really started other people realizing, oh, that's kind of cool. They can do some really neat things with that. And where should we be looking if we wanted to kind of stay up on this technology? What should we be following? Um, go to MIT has a blog for their media lab. And those kids are doing some cool things. Um, YouTube, actually, probably the best place. 
look up look up projection mapping, look up um, uh, any of the any of the double step bands. Um, you don't have to listen to the sound if you don't like double step models, but um, what they're doing is, is really really amazing to see, and um, they're really really leading the charge on it and trying some interesting things that nobody else is doing. And none of the corporations are even doing. And so it's, it's interesting because. I'll turn my mouth. It's interesting though because there, you know, um, there's no direct correlation to like a small business marketing for this, right? But yet it's there's six, there's okay. Um, one of the things I've seen, one of the things I've seen people doing with um, alternative reality or augmented reality is uh, business cards that have a little marker on them. And when you look at them on your with your smartphone, the whole card came to life, and people were would come out and talk to you and tell you about their business. And that's not expensive to do, surprisingly. It's just how clever are you what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, and um, if you ever go to a Lego store, you can hold the boxes up. They usually have a webcam in the store. You can hold the boxes up, and then you'll see what the piece looks like when it's done, including um, how it will move. Um, it, it looks like you're holding the moving piece, which is really cool. So this is interesting because I've always wanted to go to like a Skrillex show or one of these and I've always felt like I'm too old. But now I can call it research. Right? <laughs> right? So let's, maybe we can get an LA to my outing. Bob, you in? We'll go see DJ Skrillex. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a group together. I'd like to go see this live, right? I mean, who wants to go see a live? Yeah, okay. So we'll, get, we'll get a little meet up group. Okay. I guess I would think too that, that restaurants and, and places that sell fashion and, and those types of places could also um, make use of something like this. Um, yeah, show, it, show what they have in their store outside. I think store. they'll be able to project clothes onto you too, to see what it looks like. There's websites that do that right now, but there's no reason you couldn't use this to like, instead of actually physically taking off the clothes and constantly changing, why couldn't they just keep projecting new things onto you in seconds? And, and you could just be scrolling through, you know, outfits really quickly. I think that would be a really cool thing, especially if, if it's really hard to put on things like wedding dresses and stuff. So Dave, good, good or evil? I think very, very good. I think this, you know, overall, I think this is going to make the, the, the culture a lot more interesting. And just walking down the streets would be a little more interesting. When people start doing this. Um, I went to uh, Naples, Italy this year, and they were doing really cool things with QR codes. I mean, we use them just to send you to a YouTube link usually. They were doing, like, kids were walking up to posters everywhere with their phones, and, like, there was games coming out of the posters, and there was, um, uh, like mini concerts and stuff, and it was really cool. Um, we're not, you said to think it's whatever you can think of, basically. I'm just curious, is there any issue with like patents or trademarks that any companies are trying to spray in the area? Oh, I'm just wondering. Can you hear that? Oh. Where's the one with the red dots? It's not. Don't okay, he's got yeah, I want to ask, is there any issue with any companies trying to patent or trademark any of these technologies to kind of spray the territory? <laughs> well, Apple's, Apple has definitely tried to, um, um, they're trying to um, patent gestures. Good luck with that. I mean, that's like saying we love you. Know. <laughs> right. Well, any, you, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, I mean, they managed to patent rounded rectangles, which is pretty insane. But if you can, um, if they are able to patent gestures, it's going to make it very hard for people to do that. Um, but it'll also make it um, where they're going to have to get more creative, and maybe they'll start realizing that, hey, it's okay to use your eyes. There was a um, Valve game company. They make really, really cool games. They had a guy in their shop who just, as for a whim, tried what would happen if you use a tongue controller, like what quadriplegic use. Turns out your tongue is unbelievably sensitive. It can do incredibly finite movements that, um, with a controller. That they were like, oh man, this might be great for gaming. And he's like, no, really, this was an experiment. No one's going to want to use this. It's disgusting watching boys doing this out there. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, um, but he wanted it as a proof of concept to see if it could be done. Yes, it can be done um, very, very well. So, I mean, that's, that's uh, hopefully, it could be a good thing if someone makes a uh, um, lawsuit like that because maybe it'll make people more creative and wonder, you know, trying things like what um, CapSense is doing with the other parts of hands. All right. Well, 
Let's give David a big round of applause. That was uh, enlightening as usual. I, I really enjoyed the music a lot, and and I liked it because it I think expanded my mind. You know, it's uh, what you know. Come to LA to him to expand your mind. That should be our new slogan. You know, <laughs> don't need drugs, just come here. <laughs> like that, expand your mind. So. All right, enough of slow creating. So now you get to introduce yourself and tell us who you are. You never know, maybe there's someone who you want to meet. So we're going to pass the mic. We're going to go around the room. Uh, we're going to start with Joel. And when you stand up, please stand up and project. The mic is working pretty good today. So tell us your name, your company, and then we'll pass the mic around the room. Uh, I think all this feedback is why you have to shut off your electronic devices in the airplane. <laughs> I'm Joel Bergen. I was the Community Prosperity Collaborative the creators of Dish Fish Dollars. Dish Fish Dollars are a new kind of fundraising thing where you buy them from your favorite uh, charity or community organization and then you can spend them at participating businesses that display a Dish Fish logo. Uh, you can get more information at dishfish.com and if you uh, have a local business and you want to attract customers or you help to run a uh, community organization and want to raise funds, talk to them. <coughs> Hi, I'm Bob Hilsberg. I'm going to talk about what I do. I'd like to talk a little bit about it. What happened last Saturday, um, my wife and I helped tear a house down in Detroit. And that was such a wonderful experience that I think you know, organized this group to participate. I mean, it was great. Let's do that. Thanks, Bob. Why didn't I not see like a computer software and I don't really know what to say. Hi, my name is Jackie Stoliker. My company name is called Relaxology. And I help busy, stressed out people relax through very soft touch foot massage. Hi, I'm Claire Hughes. I'm a marketing and communications strategist. I work with small businesses, startups, and nonprofits. Hi, I'm Lisa Rabbit, and I'm a marketing professional, and I help companies analyze their sales, improve their products and brand. I'm looking for my next opportunity to do just that. Hi, I'm Amy Ma. Um, I have two projects. One is uh, publishing children's books in multiple languages. Uh, and the other is uh, P2P and P2C um, <coughs> family jewelry. Hi, I'm Chris Sanders. I'm an art director and I'm looking for a relaxed opportunity. Hi, my name is Dean Jeffrey. The company is WorkNet Systems. And uh, I only help people that have ever been frustrated with their computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm Stacy from Dollar Bill, we're your local digital print shop. We do things fast, efficient, and cost effective. Hi, I'm Laura Rogers. I work at Camel Ewald in the content development group, and I spend my day trying to convince clients that these are really good ideas that they were presenting. Hi, I'm Dan Grant, and I work with Laura at Camel Ewald on that portal side of content development, and we develop uh, content for websites, magazines, as I said, and also for the iPad. Hi, my name is Aaron Harburg. I do motion graphics and multimedia. Uh, Jim Campbell, excitingproductions.com. Uh, my ask is for an introduction to an organization you know that needs help telling their story. Uh, we do video productions that make a big, big difference. Uh, Jim Campbell, excitingproductions.com. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Thomas Blackwell, principal owner of Imperial International. I just want to say, Dave, um, you get an A plus for the day. I'm in old school, and what I saw today was more than Dick Tracy revisited. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hi, my name is Gregory Bentel. I work with Spring Harbor University, a Christian liberal arts university near Jackson, Michigan. Uh, where we have over 4,000 students, uh, either traditional undergraduate or uh, working adults who are trying to complete either a bachelor's or master's degree. We offer 10 different graduate programs, most of which are offered online. Hi, my name is Mike Freed. I'm retired from the Wake County Prosecutor's Office, and now I am uh, doing media 
appreciation and facilitation, primarily with the uh, Dispute Resolution Center, a uh, local nonprofit uh, community dispute uh, uh, center. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ed Carlson. I provide engineering, mechanical design, and prototypes for new products. I'm also an ambassador for the Great Lakes Entrepreneurs Quest, GLEQ, and I'd like to announce that the fall business plan competition has been extended. The application to sign up for it has been extended to October 29th. If you want more information on either of those topics, please see me after the meeting. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Merriger, and I'm a marketer at Big Tech Labs. Um, we're located in the Spark. Uh, incubator space in Ann Arbor, and we have a real estate app called Rebank CRM. It's on the Salesforce.com platform. And so, talk to me about uh, BP. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Musial, and I work with a company called Knowledge Digital right here in Ann Arbor. And uh, we love to work with entrepreneurs who would love to launch a product. So if you know of an entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur, I'd love to sit down and talk with you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Kendra Kerr, and I'm with Keller Williams. I'm a residential real estate agent. And we have record low interest rates, so that means we have a lot of buyers in the market. And we have record low costs on the market, meaning it's a seller's market. So if you've been sitting on the fence thinking you might want to sell, now may be the time, and I would love to talk to you. Hi, I'm uh, Rob Lewis with Mac Nirvana. I do uh, Apple-specific uh, training and tech support. Uh, both, I should say, on-site and live over the web. Hi, Bob Shannon. Um, I'm a CPA with my own practice in this area. Specialized in helping startups, small businesses get your accounts on your accounts on track. Hopefully, the microphone will work better. And um, I do tax accounting, business planning, small business coaching. I work at Rizzy Designs, and we're primarily a marketing firm that specializes in website design and development. Hello, my name is Scott Brockman. Hello, Ustream. I'm here with the Search Marketing Workshop. Again, the event is November 16th. Uh, must register online before November 9th. Uh, there will be two tracks, effective search marketing and mobile marketing basics. There will also be two meals, breakfast and lunch. I'm Roger Rail. I do videoing here and several other networking groups around, um, one of which will be next Thursday night, Ignite Ann Arbor, number seven. We have 17 speakers who will uh, talk in front of their 20 slides each for five minutes. Very exciting uh, program. We got uh, home canning, we've got our last, we've got the uh, space shuttle, a whole bunch of topics. So you can sign up at igniteannarbor.org. It's free. I'm Dennis Kupinski. I do sales and video marketing. I also help Rod Grout with the video in here. Hi, I'm Sandy Simon, and I'm a part owner of Trillium Technology, which is a medical imaging software company. We write software for looking at ultrasound images on iPads and other mobile devices. Hi, my name is Beth Heiss, and I work uh, for a company called Centowels doing sales and marketing. And I also teach half time at Adrian College. I uh, teach business and marketing classes. And I want to thank you, Dave, for sharing the information today, because I've still been sharing examples from your last talk with my students who eat this stuff up, and it's just really exciting to think of the future, things we can do with business and touchscreen devices. And I also want to say, I went to the Search Engine Marketing Workshop last year, and it was very good. So I will be there again this year. Hello, my name is Keith Turson. I'm the Business Development Director for the Betty Brigade. We are a uh, personal concierge uh, company that specializes in uh, relocation. We can help uh, home sellers prepare their homes for sale. Everything from boxing the material that they want to take with them to disposing of the material they don't want. We'll bring in painters, cleaners, landscapers, manage the whole project to get the house on the sale so the uh, realtor can sell it as quickly as possible. Hi, my name is 
is uh, Dan Hubel. I'm a software developer, and I've never been to one of these meetings before. I go to a lot of technical user groups, so it's kind of nice to get out and more of an entrepreneurial business network in a group like this. Um, I just recently graduated from Eastern Michigan, and I will also be at the Search Engine Marketing Workshop, which is great, one last year. It's definitely highly recommended, and I'll be doing a poster presentation on lunch. Hi, I'm Mike Brooks. I'm with Import. I'm, in, I'm with Import Technologies, uh, which is a startup company based in Lansing, and we are doing some interesting things with a unique raw material developed up there uh, at Michigan State. I'm also with uh, NEF, New Enterprise Forum, and with ACE, the uh, Annual Collaboration for Entrepreneurship. And I just want to mention, if you put into your calendars, January 31st, 2013, it's not far off, and that's the date of ACE uh, in 2013. Uh, where it's going to be held for the first time in Livonia, not in Ann Arbor. It's, we moved it to Burton Manor. Um, look for us on our website, uh, which is which currently the website's up currently, but uh, it's last year. So we are in the process of getting up this year's and uh, keep an eye out for us. Thanks. Hi, I'm Erin O'Neill, and I'm content producer Adam Jacks. Hi, I'm Allie Norris. I'm an intern for Genex. Hi, I'm Emily Allen. I'm also an intern in Genex. Hi, I'm Laura Kirchner, and I have a client account at Genex, where we do digital marketing. So uh, small businesses, large businesses, organizations, we help you leverage um, online initiatives. Hi, I'm uh, Mary Lou with um, LA2M. I almost said lunch and hour marketing. <laughs> 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 Um, and um, thank you, Dave. That was just an amazing talk. You always bring such interesting topics to us and, and things that, that people just don't get to learn about other places. So it, it's tremendous. Um, and we, we, we really appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks, everyone, for, for coming out. Um, we're in the process of, of uh, building our winter spring season. So um, if you uh, could recommend a, a speaker that, that you think would be a real a really good addition to our lineup. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. I'm Kurt Sherline, Frog Print Studios. I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. Uh, images from today go up on the LA2M uh, Facebook page. And uh, I was going to go to the house wrecking, but uh, I uh, ended up photographing a uh, charity uh, bike ride for a triathlete who had gotten hit while training. Uh, Andy Blood. So, we couldn't get the place of the ones that are trying. Thanks, Carter. And my name is Derek Maribon. I'm CEO of a company called Ingenics Digital Marketing in town. And um, so, Bob Hesselberg brought up the Detroit bus stop, which Terry Bean puts on. Was anyone else there at the bus stop? Yeah. Everyone else was from Southeast. Yeah, so maybe we should. That's a great idea. That's, they go and they like take down a crack house and they help improve the neighborhood. So it's really positive. I'm glad you went and did that. Um, let's see, let's see. So next week we have uh, Tammy Burgess is coming. A lot of you know Tammy, Women Make Connections. And she's going to be talking about where do you fall on the leadership scale. And I just looked that up on my handy dandy LA2M to go app. You know, so you should download this app. Everybody have the app for your iPhone, LA2M app. So have that, uh, Tammy Burgess next week. And um, let's give one more big round of applause to Dave. For coming up. And, um, we'll see you all next week. Go out and make some money. See you later. <laughs>